Hi everyone, it's Chris Drake here at Drake Darcy. Um, Happy New Year to you all. I hope uh, everyone's well. Uh, for the next instalment of my Six Questions With series, I'm delighted to be joined by Maria Grigorova. Um, Maria is a Group SVP at ADECO uh, with responsibility for Group Finance, Finance Strategy and Transformation. Uh, Maria is the former EMEA CFO at JLL uh, and also held a variety of Senior Finance Director and Leadership roles at Ideal Standard. Um, today we're going to discuss women in leadership, diversity and, and inclusion, and team buildings. Team building. Maria, welcome. Thank you so much, Chris. Hi, everyone. And first of all, Happy New Year and best wishes. Happy New Year to you too, to you too and uh, great to see you again. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this session. It's uh, The topics are very close to my heart. Um, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to hearing your insights. Um, to, uh, to kick us off, my, my first question is, how has your background shaped your career and leadership style? That's a very good question to start with, Chris. Um, my uh, whole career path and the way I manage and uh, um, create teams has been massively influenced uh, by uh, my experiences. So if you start, uh, first of all, thinking about uh, the international perspective, I'm East European, born and raised in Eastern Europe. Uh, I'm educated in the States. I've lived in quite a few countries. And that's given me an international perspective and appreciation of the different cultures and the different ways of working. I also think what's been very helpful in my background has been my professional experiences. I've uh, worked um, within a private equity um, portfolio. I have worked uh, in publicly traded companies and uh, that enriches the perspective of what uh, drives and creates value in the business and the ways you can optimize uh, the business itself. And uh, uh, last but not least, what I think uh, enriches a leadership style is uh, experiencing the upturns and downturns of the external world. So it's been quite uh, gratifying to see how you can optimize a business uh, as a consequence of the great downturn in 2008. But at the same time, it's been an absolute pleasure to triple another business through M&A and acquisitions on the wave of an uh, economic upturn. One thing I should say, however, is I absolutely love the finance function and I think it's incredible because it's one of the very few functions where your career opportunities are limitless and where your background strengthens you, but at the same time, it gives you skills which are absolutely transferable from one industry to another, from one geography to another, from a small to a large company. So while the background is extremely important, uh, I think uh, we are blessed to be in a function that uh, allows for quite a bit of transferability. Absolutely. No, I, I agree. Um, I think it's also across a variety of different disciplines as well that fin finance sort of, uh, influences and, and, and cuts across. Absolutely. I do agree. And to address your question about the leadership style, basically what uh, all of these experiences have given me, first of all, is an appreciation of uh, the diversity and culture and what it does and what how strong it can be. And secondly, it's taught me that inclusivity is an essential part of uh, a manager's tool set if you want to be successful in fast paced multinational companies. Mm -hmm. No, fantastic. Um, what, what advice would you give to, to women starting out in their careers? I tend to get this question quite a bit, actually, <laughs> starting from uh, teenage girls in, in my kids' school to seasoned women in, in their careers. And I usually offer three pieces of advice. Uh, the first one is dream big and speak up. You need to be clear uh, what you want to, to do, where you want to get to. You need to articulate your ambitions, not just quietly suffer that they are not achieved. And you shouldn't be constrained by where you are right now. The world is big, open, and there are a lot of opportunities. So that's my first advice. The second one is something that someone has given to me as an advice, and it is that you are your own best career manager. So you need to know where you need to get to. You need to know what kind of skills or experiences you need to be successful in where you need to get to, and you yourself need to take the initiative to develop those. 
The last piece of advice is an advice for those who, like me, want to have both a family life, which is gratifying and rewarding, and want to have a professional career, which is gratifying and rewarding. Mm -hmm. And I often get asked, how do you manage it all? Uh, you still need to sleep, you still need to look great, you still need to be healthy and take care of your well-being. So how do you do it? So I have my little toolkit around that. And a few of the things in it are, for example, uh, making sure you have a support network. I know with uh, lots of people are talking about this, but uh, you need to plan for risks and you need to have a fallback option if something goes wrong. Another thing that I personally found very helpful is uh, um, not to be a perfectionist when it comes to family life expectations and professional life expectations. Well, you might miss an occasional cookie bake or a school performance, or you may not be able to spend as much time as you want to with, with your colleagues. It's a little bit of a trade-off, but uh, you can have it both if you're willing to not to be a perfectionist. And uh, last but not least, for me, the, the advice that I give to people uh, who are in different stages of their life is there's always time to build a career. So just please don't sacrifice your family for the sake of a career. Yeah, no, fantastic. Um, I, I, I'm sure that, that that advice has been, um, yeah, yeah, re really, really well received, and, and and will be sort of moving forward as well. Um, I, I guess just just moving on to the DNI piece. What, why is diversity and inclusion important to you, and and what are the benefits of having diverse teams? I'm particularly passionate about this topic, so thank you for inviting me to talk about that, Chris. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> First of all, let's talk a little bit about the way I define diversity. Um, very often when you come into a corporate environment, diversity is about the percentage of women you have in managerial positions or percentage of women you have in your workforce. And for me, diversity is a much broader um, all-encompassing construct. It includes diversity of cultures, diversity of work and personal experiences, Diversity of uh, education, all of these things uh, can be extremely powerful when you put them to work in a well-managed, very diverse team. And uh, in terms of benefits, we've all read multitudes of research that diversity helps make businesses more profitable, give them purpose, create better succession plans. For me, uh, as I've been building those teams, and as I particularly enjoy them, I found a few specific benefits. The first one is uh, diversity brings you creativity of solutions. And if you can find people that complement themselves in their skills and their experiences, what you come up as a product, especially under pressure in, in a fast-paced uh, environment, is uh, incredibly powerful. The other thing is we talk a lot about labor shortages and shortages of talent and war of talent. Actually, if you approach building your team with a diversity in mind, your talent pool is much bigger. Mm -hmm. And that creates actually um, a very good multiplier effect. Um, the other thing that, especially in, in the finance function, we think of a lot around uh, optimization, risk management, et cetera, et cetera. I found having diverse team to be very helpful when it comes on uh, better planning for risks or making sure you don't reinvent the wheel uh, around processes or systems optimizations. And uh, the last thing, which I think is super important, it's so much fun to have mm -hmm. a diverse team and uh, to be able to enjoy everyone's experiences, everyone's thoughts, and come up with these amazing solutions. Yeah, I could, couldn't agree more. Um, and and how, can, how can companies and finance functions become more, more inclusive? Well, there's multitudes of, uh, of ways, and we've heard a lot about uh, equity by design, being consciously inclusive, having inclusive leadership. One tool that I found quite powerful, but we don't talk uh, quite often about, is well-being. Well being actually is a great tool to make sure we uh, bring inclusion and we, we, we make highly performing a diverse team. And we at the, the ADECO Group Finance Function, we've taken this very seriously. And uh, we have worked around creating, for example, guardrails, our golden rules, 
that allow um, our teams and ourselves to manage better our work-life balance. And they're not complicated things, but we're very passionate about them and we stick uh, to them and they include uh, rules around meeting times, duration and content. They include rules around uh, personal time off, making sure you take it. They include rules around planning well. And uh, we've equipped uh, our function with uh, with a tool set to make sure they can truly benefit from them. Fantastic. No, no, sounds, uh, yeah, sounds like a great, a great structure and that's something that would be uh, very much of use elsewhere as well. Um, from, from a hiring perspective, what, what advice would you give to finance leaders? I have four pieces of advice. The first one is hire for capability and potential. Don't hire just for the role. Um, if you think about it, especially if you hire um, in the more junior roles, we don't really know how our jobs are going to look like in 20 years. Mm. The only thing we know is we will always need high integrity, creative uh, and enthusiastic hard workers. So please don't ignore this. It's uh, we, we are hiring for the longer term. Um, the second thing is, uh, I, I don't know whether you're going to like this, Chris, but uh, be brave and give people a chance. They, you don't necessarily need to hire for people from the same geography or the same industry or the same experience for the jobs that you're hiring. Sometimes the, this brings richness and uh, at the end, we talked about diversity, the diversity of backgrounds and experiences is uh, what uh, makes companies successful very often. I actually agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> <laughs> very good. And uh, then another thing that a wise man early in my career told me is when you hire someone, you put your reputation behind that. That's true. And it's something that we very often ignore. And in my case, uh, whenever the position allows it, I hire for succession. And I always visualize, would that person be able to be a group CFO at one day? And sometimes it might happen. Maybe I hire my future boss, but, and I will be very proud about that. And then the fourth piece of advice is uh, um, to stop thinking that the only person who could be successful in finance is a traditionally qualified accountant. I've seen, especially in my current experience, amazing things done in our function by uh, by data scientists who are trained completely outside of your traditional debit and credit uh, environment. Yeah, excellent. That's some really, really useful takeaways there as well. Um, and I guess sort of um, final question and looking ahead, um, what are the trends that you would like to see become commonplace? Um, there's a lot of conversation recently around trends in, in the ADECO group, especially given the line of business that we're on. Uh, we've done a lot of research on the world of work and trends around flexible uh, work, digital transformation, uh, and so on and so forth. Building on the research that I've, uh, I've studied, uh, there are three trends that I would love to see um, in the future. The first one is uh, truly and honestly giving up the, where meaningful of course, the traditional nine to five model where everyone's coming to an office uh, at the same time, leaving an office at the same time uh, and leaving the work with them at that point. I think this is outdated at this point. We've, we've seen it through the crisis. We've seen uh, uh, people aspiring for more flexibility. We've seen people being willing to train themselves, to experiment, to go uh, to places they've never gone before professionally. And I think we should benefit from this and reinforce uh, the trends um, uh, around that. And uh, a very interesting research that I came across uh, from Stanford says 50% uh, of the five-year-olds right now will live to be 100 years old. Wow. So if you think about that, that means that the traditional 40 years of work is no longer going to be valid. People will work much more, probably 60 years, so God knows how many, maybe 80 years and so on yes. and so forth. So... Um, we need to be redesigning the work to make sure it better fits within this uh, longer longer work life That's and uh, truly thinking about uh, uh, what it means, how do we work, where do we work and what do we do. So um, 
The second trend is around building an inclusive future. And there, we a, a thought that came across is uh, we very often jump to recruit for new positions, external resources, um, rather than giving, prioritizing our own resources and allowing them to upskill and reskill, become more agile and utilizing those which is a way to create an inclusive environment. It's a way to better leverage uh, uh, the pool that we have. And uh, I would love to see us consciously working around that in the future. And the last thing, you are talking to a finance person at the end. So I, I need to mention that, and I passionately believe in it, is if you want something to happen, you need to set targets, you need to measure it, and you need to hold people responsible to it. So I really believe we need to start measuring diversity and inclusion and setting targets around it. And uh, we need to stop thinking uh, simply around uh, a good person is a person that spends lots of hours in an office. And we should start uh, equipping our managers uh, around how to manage in the new dynamic environment, uh, um, in the new virtual environment that we have. And uh, we should continue to reinforce the sense of purpose within people, because at the end, this is a great way to future proof our organizations. Absolutely. No, thank you very much. Uh, Maria, fascinating as always. Um, thanks again for, for sharing your perspective with us today. Thank you for having me over, Chris. My pleasure. Thank you.